Hey, what's going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing my tips and predictions on the 2019 AFL Brownlow. But before I get into it, I'd just like to say yes, I know I'm doing this video a little bit late. I actually had no idea when the Brownlow was coming on. I knew it'd be this week, but I didn't actually know it would be today. So I'm actually quickly recording this and then I'll edit it and hopefully I'll get it out, you know, like a couple hours before the Brownlow. But even if it doesn't come out, you know, super fast, I think it'd still be cool to, you know, reflect on my thoughts and opinions and see if I got these right. But anyway, I'm going to be starting off with the honourable mentions, and we're going to be going off with Marcus Bontempelli. Now, in my opinion, Marcus Bontempelli's probably been a top three player this year, but the reason he's coming on the honourable mentions is there are so many players on his team that I think might actually take some of his votes, and, you know, these include, you know, McRae, and it goes on, McRae, Hunter, etc., Dunkley, there are so many players on the, you know, on his team that are pretty decent midfielders that I think, you know, can potentially steal his vote, so that's why Marcus Bonzenpalli is on the honourable mentions, but as, you know, again, I wouldn't be surprised if he does, you know, actually finish higher than this, but by honourable mentions, I'm actually meaning pretty much six or seven as these are, as I said, you know, these are my top five um, for tips and predictions. And yeah, so who really knows? Marcus Bonds and Pally could definitely surprise me and actually finish in the top five. But I don't really know. As I said, I think he's been a top three player, but who really knows? And then we got the other honorable mention I'm going to be going with, and that's Tim Kelly. And again, the reason why Tim Kelly's on here, even though he's had a great year, um, I think potentially Patrick Dangerfield might also take some of his votes, so I'd probably actually rank him at maybe 7th and Bont maybe at 6th. But yeah, I think potentially Danger might take a couple of his votes, and there's a couple other players in their team here and there, like Selwood and that, who might pinch in a couple of votes here and there. But again, he's had a great season. I expect him to pretty much finish in the top 7 or maybe even the top 10. But anyway, starting at number 5 now, we have Dustin Martin and... Pretty much you could either swap Bond or Dusty because Dusty's actually suspended, if you guys didn't know. Can't really remember what the suspension is for. I don't remember if he deserved it or not, but yeah, I, I guess, yeah, I, who really knows? I can't even remember it. But Dusty, has he was pretty disappointing the first half of the season, and I don't think we'll have really gotten that many votes. But the second half of the season, you could argue he was the best player in the AUFL, and he was an absolute beast. And he's, you know, obviously doing really good still, and he's just being a really good player for the second half of the year, and has been quite dominant, as most of you guys know, and I think he'll get a bunch of three-vote games in the second half of the year, so I expect Dusty to poll pretty high in this um, uh, Brownlow, but as I said, he's, you know, he's suspended, and I'm not, I can't really remember what for, but yeah, who really knows, but if, I'm replacing him at fifth, but if you want to swap Bont and Dusty, because obviously, Maybe counting Dusty in my top five is not right because he's suspended, then whatever. That's it. I don't really know. So it's either Dusty slash um, Bond at five. But anyway, let's move on to number four now. We have Patrick Dangerfield from the Geelong Cats. Again, I think he's been a top three player this year alongside Bond, but I don't think he will finish um, that high due to players taking his votes. For example, Tim Kelly and, you know, Joel Selwood pinching in here. But both of those players, like Tim Kelly and... Dangerfield are going to have, you know, quite a bit of votes between them. And who really knows? Both of these players might actually be swapped in positions. Who you know, Dusty might be like um just in the top ten and maybe Kelly will be in the top five or it will be the other way around. I think um Danger has had a better year than Kelly, so that's why I'm putting Danger in my top five. But who really knows? Brownlow Knight can sometimes be a little bit weird and we have no idea who is going to win it this year. This is one of the first years, I think, since 2014 when Matt Prittis won it, that we have no idea who's going to win it this year. And who knows? I think there's going to be some surprises as well. Like, look at it. Angus Brayshaw finished in the top three last year from Remembrance. That's a massive surprise. And who knows? I think there's going to be a couple of those surprise players here and there. Can't really think of any off the top of my head. But anyway, let's go on to number three now. And that is Nat Fife. Now, these three players that I have in my top three... I think are the most likely to win it. I've got Nat Fife at my number three spot right now. He's on a mediocre team. Not many players are going to really take his votes, except maybe Michael Walters and um, maybe a couple others here and there, but I don't really think. I think Michael Walters is the only other challenging player that might take his votes. Brad Hill, maybe. 
Not too sure, but I think Nat Fife has had a pretty good season. I think he's definitely a top three player in the AFL this year. So it's going to be really interesting to see where he is going to rank in the brand low. And who, who knows? Potentially, I think he could win it. But yeah, I'm not too sure. And then I got number two. We got Lockie Neal. Obviously, an outstanding season for the Brisbane Lions with his first season with Brisbane. Now, we've seen Tom Mitchell rank pretty high just based off disposals and all of that type of stuff. I think Lockie Neal's had a pretty similar season to what Tom Mitchell has. You could argue who was better. Was it Tom Mitchell or was it Lockie Neal? I don't really know. I think both have had a pretty similar season. And uh, Tom Mitchell's 2018, you can compare to Lockie Neal's 2019, in my opinion. But, yeah, that's why I think Lockie Neal is going to vote high, just based on the fact that he had a bunch of big disposal games. And, obviously, I'm not too sure if umpires really check the stats much, but... He's in the midfield, and he's going to be pretty noticeable, especially, you know, getting all those balls off the ground and, you know, hand-passing it out the back or what, whatever. And, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see, again, um, if he can potentially win it and do what Tom Mitchell potentially did. Not too sure, but, yeah, I think he is always a chance. And then we go on to who I think might win the brown low, and that's number one, Patrick Cripps. Now... I don't even know if Patrick Cripps has been the best player this year. So much people are going to argue who has been the best player this year. Was it Nat Fife? Was it Patrick Dangerfield? Was it Lockie Neal? Was it um, Patrick Cripps? You know, was it Dusty? Was it Bont? Was it even Chalor, who I don't actually have on my list that I could have put as an honorable mention as well? There's so many players that I think could potentially win it. And a couple of players that I think could have actually had a better season than Patrick Cripps, but... I think we all know Patrick Cripps is going to vote extremely high. Like, who is going to take his votes on his team? Think about that. No one is going to outvote Patrick Cripps on his team. Literally, Sam Walsh is probably the only player that I think could potentially get a couple votes in the Carlton lineup. I don't know how many players Carlton are going to get that are actually going to vote that well besides Patrick Cripps. But if, you know, Patrick Cripps was on a different team... Who knows, maybe he'd get less votes, but I think he's going to poll pretty high just based on the fact that he plays for Carlton. And I don't know if he'll get more votes than Tom Mitchell's 28 last year. Who knows, he, he could potentially get up to 30, but I don't actually know if any players this year are going to get near that. If any, I think Patrick Cripps is going to have the most and the highest chance just based on the fact that, again, he plays for Carlton, which is... Obviously not the best team and there's going to be not many players that are going to be able to outvote him. So I think Patrick Cripps is a massive likely chance. And then obviously Nat Fife again being on not the best team I think could potentially have a massive chance as well to you know vote pretty high. But yeah, I definitely would really like to know your thoughts and opinions down below. Who do you guys think has been the best player this year? I think when we compare best player this year to Brownlow medalist, it's a little bit different because... I forgot what it was. I think it was actually... It was either the coaches or players, but they actually voted Marcus Bontempalli as the best player this year. And I don't think that's going to be the same when it comes to Brownlow night because it, the voting's obviously a little bit different. And as I said, Patrick Cripps playing on quite a worse team, I think is going to vote extremely high. Whether or not he was the best player or not this year... I'd, I, yeah, it's going to be extremely interesting, but I definitely would really like to know your guys' thoughts and opinions down below. Who do you guys think should win the Brownlow? Who do you guys think deserves it? Who do you guys think has been the most valuable player this year? Or who do you guys think has been the best player this year? I definitely would really like to know your thoughts and opinions down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for all the latest AFL content and like the video if you guys enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe to my gaming channel and my IRL slash vlogging channel. Link in the description down below. So make sure you guys leave a like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.